you're retired and you recognize how important it is to stay in shape. And yet being retired, spending money is an issue. So you want to keep costs down. That'll be today's topic on the Dollar Stretcher interview. Hi, I'm Gary Foreman, editor of thedollarstructure.com. I'm a baby boomer and I do recognize how important it is to try to stay in shape. And being frugal, I want to keep my costs down. To help us find out how to best do that, we've invited Kimberly William Evans of funandfit.org to join us. So Kimberly has taught fitness on four different continents and four different languages for 30 years to over 20,000 live participants, which is a lot of people. And she describes herself as a boom chicka boomer. And we're going to ask her what that means. Kimberly, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Now, so what exactly is a boom chicka boomer? <laughs> well, that was my quick way to create a tagline for our, our website, um, which is active aging for boom chicka boomers because of the saying of boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom. So I just added boomers in there since my twin sister Alexandra and I are baby boomers. And, and that made it super clear who we uh, were addressing on our website and who are, uh, for whom our active aging advice um, was directed. Plus, it's fun, and we want fitness to be fun. It should be. It should be. Now, uh, well, let's, let's look at some practical ideas. Uh, for someone like myself who, who wanted to get back into a regular exercise program, uh, is there some place to find bargains on exercise equipment if we wanted to do a home gym? Oh, for equipment, here's my best bargain, and it's the $7 replacement for every piece of equipment that's in a gym, as long as someone knows what they're doing with it. And that's either a Dyna band or a tube, those elastic bands, or the tubes are the ones with the handles. And just getting one or two of those, they're packable, they're portable, they're lightweight, and they're super inexpensive and you can replicate pretty much every exercise that a machine um, would do for you with that seven to $10 investment. That's my favorite piece of equipment. So and having spend, said that. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, so I don't need to spend a thousand dollars and make payments for 10 months uh, to, to have a piece of exercise equipment? <laughs> Well, I, I will say there are some fantastic um, there's some fantastic exercise equipment out there, and I'm always impressed with what uh, people are inventing and what companies are putting forth. But for the person looking to just get active without investing a lot of money, yes, these really inexpensive options exist. The option that we don't recommend is the one where you spend a thousand dollars and then have a dusty coat rack that your clothes hang off of that used to be cleverly disguised as exercise equipment no one uses. Yeah, they make, make an unusual code rack. And now, what, what about videos? Uh, what part should they play uh, in a fitness program? Well, I think there are so many great options out there. Certainly, viewers can go to YouTube and access millions of workout videos for free. Um, I would say, as my sister also suggested in the article that you put up on your site, that it's important to know that the advice you're getting is good advice. You don't want to be doing something inexpensive and unsafe. That's a kind of a false savings. But if, if in the videos that you um, look at or that your, your listeners and viewers check out on YouTube uh, look to be um, created by people who have certifications, who are qualified and credentialed, um, and they explain good technique, here's how to do the move, that I would say your viewers can access more hours of workouts than they'd ever dream of for free. Um, and of course, my sister and I ourselves have about a uh, hundred or so videos on our YouTube channel, all for free. So, and they're designed for baby boomers, for the over 50 person. So um, they can check out our channel too. For shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll include a link over uh, to your channel. Uh, uh on the article part of this. Yeah, now, one thing, uh, I mean, I know years ago, uh, uh, I had a gym membership uh, and, you know, maintained it for a number of years until, until kids got in the way. Uh, what about that? Is, is gym membership really necessary today? Oh, necessary. Well, that's a tough one. I'm going to say the short answer is no, but I want to say yes. 
<laughs> so does someone need a gym membership in order to become more fit, to reap the benefit of movement, you know, to improve their life overall through activity? The answer is no. It, what they require is a door to go out and uh, start walking. Um, and that's a great step right there. I mean, just walking, which is free, can improve um, you know, health parameters, can improve cognitive skills, can enhance the brain, can help them, you know, someone's mood. And, you know, maybe someone's going to invest in some good walking shoes, but, but there are so many great options out there that don't require a gym membership. But having said that, Gary, if you don't mind my interspersing, if a person is someone who likes exercising with other people and enjoys that kind of camaraderie or that kind of structure or says, well, I know that I, I paid my gym membership, therefore I'm going to go, then I do recommend that membership because for a lot of people, if they commit some money per month, then that becomes a good investment because they feel that it's like I'm not going to waste my money. I put that into the membership. Therefore, I know I'll work out because that's always a better savings than to not spend money and not move either. And say, oh, I didn't spend money, so I don't need to go move. You know, I'm not losing anything. They're this losing some, time being active. So sometimes it's, it's actually a motivational tool. Uh, uh, as much as anything else. Now, now, something else that occurs to me, I mean, when I was 30, uh, lifting weight to gain muscle was, uh, was the goal at that point. And, and uh, for most retirees, uh, you know, we, we've, we've passed that point. Uh, uh, so should an exercise program be different for a retiree than it would be somebody who would say 25 or 35? Well, those are great questions, Gary. There are actually two questions and one that you're asking. Um, I think I'm hearing the how is exercise different for the over 50 compared to when, when we were 25? And what is the role of strength training in that? And for the over 50 person, and especially the over 65 person, and we've seen again and again from research that it's never too late to start a strength training program. And in fact, for function, for the ability to continue doing the things in daily life that we love doing, strength training is really key. And I would highly recommend it, especially as we get older. So the more decades that pass, the more important strength training and resistance training become in order to continue living our lives the way we, we currently do and functionally being able to do uh, the activities that we enjoy or the ones that we want to add post-retirement. Um, but that's not to gain, say, cardio, cardio or aerobic activity. It is also extremely important. It just meets different goals. But I, if somebody said, I'm only going to do one or the other, I would say do the strength training. Um, as far as how would it be different, yes. Um, most likely I would encourage your um, dollar stretcher audience to look at strength training that's um, easier on the joints maybe, um, those tubes and bands that I mentioned. Um, perhaps not um, going for as high of what's called intensity or resistance and uh, still going at least two or three times a week for strength training, but maybe doing more repetitions at a lower weight to start and to, to acclimate, and picking those moves that have great benefit without some of the risk, because there are some high-risk moves that we might be willing to do at 25, um, but at 50, 60, 70, post-retirement, I know for me, my joints don't want to do some of the uh, loaded squats and lunges that I might have done 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Is that yeah. answering what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's not. It's not. It's not so. Uh, how much weight you can press at this point? Uh, uh, you're better off with lower weight and more repetitions and and slower repetitions. So it's not so much snap action kind of moves. Well, those are great points. I'm. I don't think I'd be quite. I. I don't think I'd recommend snap actions for even the youngsters. I certainly see that. <laughs> But um, I would recommend always control regardless of gender or age. And I actually would still advise our baby boomers to do some moves that have uh, some speed to them just so we retain that, that power capability. Um, I know a lot of people feel that, okay, once we get older, we have to take power out of our moves. But in fact, research is showing more and more that we want a little bit of that still in our in our. Um, workouts, routines, and daily lives. Yeah, now, what would you tell somebody who, uh, you know, is a baby boomer or a recent retiree uh, who has never uh, uh, done any formal exercise in their life? Uh, you know, not since we had gym class in 10th grade. Uh, what, would you, what would you suggest <laughs> to them? 
junior I don't high. Want to, I, don't want, I don't want to talk about the rope. We don't, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Those were brutal. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, the question was some. I'm sorry, say it again. I got, I got distracted well, I, I, by the what, 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 would you tell, what would you tell that person that, you know, ha hasn't been in a gym since 10th grade? Uh, uh, you know, they've, they've gone decades without any formal exercise program. Oh, I have some great advice for that person. Number one, it's never too late to start. Number two, start with the least amount possible. This is something my sister and I encounter all the time. In fact, we're developing some really great products that we're going to have on our site that exactly address this because we've had this question so often. It either comes as decades have gone by and I haven't done anything or I need to restart. I sort of fell off the exercise bandwagon a few years ago or menopause hit or now I'm retired and I want to travel but I'm not fit enough. We get this question all the time. So we're developing exactly programs for that. Um, but having said that, we like to say, do the least possible. Start there. Most people get overwhelmed. They think they have to do everything they've heard, all this big advice, go all, you know, four to five times a week cardio, two to three times a week strength training. We would say, all right, um, let's meet you where you are. You're at zero or one. What does a two look like? Oh, well, that's maybe walking to my mailbox and picking up my mail. All right, well, that worked out pretty well. What's a three look like? Well, three looks like maybe I'll take my dog on a longer walk. And maybe while I'm watching a TV show, I'll do a couple of um, squats like up and down from my chair during the commercials, just, you know, coming up and down. Or maybe I'll lie down on the floor during those commercials and do a couple of ab curls. And gradually work into it to that point. Well, if I could do five minutes, maybe I can achieve 10. If I did 10, maybe I can achieve 15. And, and look, at, look at it that way. Um, and there's some fun research that was done on 96-year-olds who were using walkers and canes, and I know this is older than your group, but essentially scientists found what they thought would be the least fit group possible, the walkers, the canes, and average age in the study of 96, they put them on a strength training program that lasted just eight weeks, and they just did, um, I forget how many, but just a, a short um, series of exercises, and everyone in that study progressed and got stronger. They were coming from nothing, decades of nothing, and got stronger. And people, some of the people in the walkers were able to give away their walkers. Some of the ones with canes were then able to walk without canes. So it's never too late to start. And again, they can maybe do a search on YouTube, or they can go to um, ACE Fitness, acefitness.org great videos there, really professionally done, absolutely qualified. And look at the um, intro level ones, the, the uh, option one, version one, um, that, that give those um, progressions. That's a really encouraging, that really encouraging advice. So, well, Kimberly, we thank you for sharing your wisdom uh, uh, with our viewers today. Uh, uh, we want to thank the viewers for joining us and invite, uh, invite them to follow uh, uh, to subscribe to the Dollar Structure YouTube channel as well as the Fun and Fitness YouTube channel uh, and visit us on thedollarstructure.com. We'll look forward to seeing you again on the next Dollar Structure interview.